What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch back here for another fantasy football stardom and sit em for week number seven of the NFL season. It's week number seven, and that means we are getting one step closer to the fantasy football playoffs. That also means we're right in the middle of the season. Must win territory in fantasy football right now. Maybe you're on the edge. Maybe you're sitting at three and three. Maybe you're two and four. You need to get these victories right now in fantasy football if you want to make your way into your league's playoffs and have a chance for that championship. You just got to find a way into the fantasy playoffs to win that fantasy championship. And I'm going to help you do that this week with my starts and my sits. Again, guys, we don't do any easy sits here or easy starts. These are the tough choices, the tough decisions. Let me know your questions in the comment section below. Let's get into the stardom and sit and help you get one step closer to the playoffs. Let's start off with the quarterback position and my big waiver wire pickup stream quarterback of the week is Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield plays the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, which has given up 16 touchdown passes so far this season coming into week number seven. The Bucs have the 32nd best pass defense in the NFL. That also means last. They, this game is expected to have 51.5 points scored in this game, an over-under of 51.5. I would actually take the over in that. I think this is going to be a high-scoring matchup. Plus, you look at the Buccaneers' defense, they're without two of their best pass rushers, Gerald McCoy, Vinnie Curry, both guys injured, out. So Baker Mayfield, I believe a big start this week. I think he has one of his best NFL games to date. I think he has his best performance to date against a weak Bucks secondary. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is getting his man back. He's getting his number one target back. He's getting his go-to guy back. T.Y. Hilton is back. Nearly 800 yards. Six touchdowns so far this season for Andrew Luck at home. And that was only in two games. You throw in the fact that there's probably going to be some short fields in this game for Andrew Luck to run up the score on the Buffalo Bills. I expect the Colts to win this game at home. Luck's better at home. He gets his number one target back against a Bills team that's not very good, and they're starting Derek Anderson at quarterback. So Andrew Luck should have a big game. Jared Goff. Jared Goff, I expect to bounce back week this week against the 49ers secondary and defense. Last two weeks, kind of rough. Not exactly what we expected from Jared Goff after his hot start, especially last week. Um, but the 49ers, luckily for him, 21st, or 25th versus the pass, sorry, 29th in points on defense. So the 49ers defense is not very good, specifically their secondary. I actually think the 49ers are pretty good against the run. They rank around the middle of the league. I think they rank 14th. But I think they'll do a fairly decent job against Todd Gurley. I actually expect McVay's game plan to go into this game to be using Gurley more as a decoy than other weeks. I think Gurley, of course, is going to be a vocal point of the offense, but not necessarily in the running game. I actually expect him to use him just enough to open up that play action to hit his receivers down the field. Um, Brandon Cook should have a nice game in this one. And really, the 49ers secondary can't stick with any receivers. Um, this is just a not very talented secondary, and Jared Goff should have a bounce-back game. It's in good weather, so that's a good thing. Last week, not good weather against Denver, and definitely should have a bounce-back game here because the 49ers have surrendered, surrendered over 21 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks this season. The next start, Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston against Atlanta, 395 yards, four touchdowns, and was the start of the week here on the bottom line view. I say start him again. He plays the Cleveland Browns at home. Cleveland, 29th versus the pass. A lot of people have this misconception that the Cleveland Browns defense is actually pretty good. And yes, they have a few pretty good players. I won't deny that. 
but as a unit, they haven't performed that well. Um, 29th versus the pass. I expect Jameis Winston to convert with deep shots down the field. Cleveland gave up two deep touchdowns last week to Tyrell Williams. I expect Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson to do the same in this game. Um, the Browns have also given up an average of 340 yards when they're on the road. So expect Winston to throw for a lot of yards and a few touchdowns in this game. Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton plays on Sunday Night Football, so it is a little bit scary because Dalton isn't a great primetime quarterback. Neither are the Bengals a good primetime team. But against the Chiefs defense, he should play well. Like, this is a start. He plays the 31st best defense against the pass in the NFL. The 32nd best defense in the NFL according to yards. The worst defense against every team in the league. Uh, the game script in this game should favor the pass. It should be a shootout. The over-under is 58, which is the highest of the week. So the Chiefs are expected to score a lot of points, which they will because they're the Chiefs. And then you have the Bengals who will have to keep up. I expect a very aggressive offensive game plan from the Bengals. A lot of passing down the field. I expect uh, Boyd to get in the end zone. I expect Green to get in the end zone. I expect a lot of deep shots from this Bengals um, team. And they, again, they need to keep up with Mahomes. So Dalton should have a good game, even if it's due to garbage points at the end of the day. Quarterback sits. Deshaun Watson. Watson plays the Jaguars this week. The Jaguars are first versus the pass in the NFL. It didn't seem like it last week, that's for sure. But they're first versus the pass and second in total yards, even despite a couple of lackluster performances. Watson's line is definitely going to struggle in this game. The offensive line is bad. They've given up 70-plus pressures so far this year, which is 20 more than any other team in the NFL, and they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road, and this pass rush with a pissed-off Jaguars defense? Not a huge fan of Watson this week. He had a bad week last week against the Buffalo Bills defense. That's okay, but not nearly as talented as this Jaguars defense. And I expect the Jaguars to fix a few things, self-scout their defense, and change a little bit of their scheme. So Watson, not a huge fan. I actually think that the Jaguars will win this game, and Watson should struggle in the process. The Jags, at home, have only given up 20 points to New England, which really wasn't 20 points. They scored near the end of the game to make it that. Nine points against the Titans and 12 points against the Jets. So they've been dominant at home. Dak Prescott. Dak plays the Washington Redskins this week. Dak put up his best game he's had since last December. Uh, Prescott has scored fewer than 14 points in seven of his last eight road contests. So he's not a very good road quarterback. He's playing a Redsco uh, Redskins defense, which is top 10 in the NFL right now, eighth uh, to be exact. And the Redskins defense is pretty solid. I think they'll be able to contain the run, running game of the uh, Dallas Cowboys a little bit. Um, Zeke should have some success, but I actually think that they'll be keying in a little bit more than the Jaguars were on Cole Beasley, which they actually fare fairly well against slot receivers. And also they should key in on Dak's legs and the running attack from Dak. Uh, I think their 3-4 scheme with their outside linebackers, I think will really help that. And I think it will be a little bit easier to defend Dak Prescott on the read options, the designed runs. So I think the Redskins defense will be all over the Cowboys. I expect this to be a very low scoring game. Um, it's a 41.5 over under, which is the second lowest of the week. And these are the second and eighth ranked defenses in the NFL going at it. So expect a low scoring contest. Don't start Dak this week. Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota should be a sit every week. I think I say it every week, but I need to say it again. He has one game over 130 yards, and that was against the Eagles, his best game in a long time. He was sacked 11 times last week. 11. London underdogs, which he is this week against the Chargers, don't fare well as well. So I am definitely not on the Mariota train this week. Alex Smith. He plays the Cowboys defense, which is second in points, eighth first to pass, fourth in total yards. The Cowboys defense is legit, and they have a legitimate pass rush. Um, I also believe that the Cowboys will be able to slow down the running attack of Adrian Peterson, which means that Alex Smith will probably have to be forced into some awkward situations against this pass rush and solid secondary. 
Um, Smith has thrown zero touchdowns in two games this year. I think he maybe throws one in this game. I think the Skins can definitely win this game. But like I said with Dak, it's going to be a low-scoring affair. Alex Smith has scored 17-plus fantasy points this year only once. So it's not like you're really getting a high upside play, even if you do play him. And the last one is risky, but that's what I do here. Risky. Drew Brees. He's playing the Ravens. And I'm not necessarily saying sit him if he's your only quarterback and it's a it's not necessarily um, a league where you can go out there and get a quarterback to start. But I'm saying just temper expectations against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are fantastic at home, especially defensively. Um, the Ravens are first in yards, first in points, which they only give up like 10.5 points per game so far this year, and they're second versus the pass. This isn't a dome where Drew Brees is really, really good. He actually struggles a little bit outside. Um, he doesn't throw the ball as well outside, especially against good defenses like the Ravens. The Ravens are 2-0 and so far this year at home. And I just, you know, maybe don't sit Drew Brees, but just be cautious. If you have a better start, like I would probably start Baker Mayfield over Drew Brees. I'm just being honest. I think it's a tough matchup. This should be a defensive football game. And I just don't love Drew Brees on the road against a very tough defense. The best in the NFL right now. Running back starts. Nick Chubb and Duke Johnson. No uh, Hyde anymore. Hyde's gone. So Nick Chubb's the guy. Nick Chubb's the guy. And Duke Johnson, he has a designed role now. He has a, a, a fit, perfect role. He's going to be that pass catcher. And the way that I explain this on my reaction video is this is the new Michelle and White. Duke Johnson's James White, Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle. You're going to see similar roles here. And I think now that they only have two backs and they have those carved out roles for these two players, you're going to see more production from a fantasy standpoint. I also think these two guys are going to be a big part of the offense, whether that's in the passing game with Duke Johnson or the rushing attack with Nick Chubb. Um, he's the feature back now, Nick Chubb. Uh, Johnson should be more heavily involved and should be probably the third option in the passing game behind Landry and Najoku for Mayfield. Plus, you have to factor in they're playing the Bucks, a bad defense, and they don't have McCoy or Curry, as I brought up before. Carry on Johnson. I love carry on Johnson in the second half of this year. I think he could really be one of the guys that breaks out over the second half of this year. Um, the Lions are coming off a bye, so I'm hoping that they self-scouted and realized that Carrion Johnson is the best back and the best shot they have in the running game. Um, the Finns are 21st versus the run and have given up some big games. Um, they gave up quite a few yards against the Bears last week. They've given up big, big yardage totals to the Patriots. I think the way that Lions' offensive line is performing so far this year, Carrion Johnson should have a nice week coming off the bye. Tariq Cohen. Uh, Tariq Cohen versus the Patriots. He's going to be a matchup nightmare for this team. The Patriots don't have a lot of speed at linebacker, so this should definitely be the focus of their game plan, getting the ball to Tariq Cohen in space, getting the ball to him in the screen game, the running game, and the passing game, and I could see him having a big play in this one against the Patriots. Tevin Coleman and Ito Smith. Um, this game is expected to have a lot of points, so you can basically count on one or both of these guys to get into the end zone. Plus, the Giants haven't been excellent versus the run. The Giants actually ranked 25th versus the run this season. So Tevin Coleman should finally see that big uh, breakout game on the ground. And Ido Smith, I expect to probably score a touchdown. So I'd start both of them. Coleman as a running back too. Smith as a flex. Corey Clement. The Panthers have been giving up more fantasy points than usual versus running backs. You actually look at their schedule, look at their game log. They had a big line versus Adrian Peterson. They couldn't stop Adrian Peterson with any success. Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley, and they gave up a lot of yards to him. The Atlanta running backs this season had a, a big game against him, Coleman and Freeman. Um, and they also gave up a pretty good line, 89 yards and a touchdown to Giovanni Bernard. So the Eagles, the focus of their game plan going forward for their offense will be establishing the run, getting a strong push up front, which is where they were so dominant last year. Corey Clement should have a nice game here. He's a dangerous receiver out of the backfield. He's also the best running back they have on their team, and I think he'll be the focus of this offense going forward in the backfield. The running back sits. Alex Collins versus the Saints. The Saints, did you actually know that they have the number one rushing defense in the NFL? It's true. 
Um, that's why I'm not really a fan of Alex Collins this week. I think that the Saints are going to come in and their focus of their game plan will be to stop the run and force Flacco to beat them. Isaiah Crowell, he's playing the Vikings defense, which yes, they're not the same as last year, but they're actually pretty good against the run, ranking ninth this year. Uh, the running backs against the Vikings have only averaged 3.8 yards per attempt and the fourth fewest PPR points versus uh, Minnesota in general. So Isaiah Crowell, he's actually been a weird case this year because he has a great game, bad game, great game, bad game, great game. I think he's on the bad game week, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. But otherwise, I think that this game will be a Vikings, um, I don't want to say domination, but the Vikings should have a fairly good lead in this game, which takes Crowell out of the game plan, puts Powell in the game plan, and I just don't see the game flow going well for Crowell. Lamar Miller. Runners have averaged just 2.98 yards per attempt against the Jaguars when they're at home this season. Um, Lamar Miller is not playing well as of late. He hasn't been good in a per carry basis. I think he's looking over his shoulder when um, Foreman gets back. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I, I think that Lamar Miller overall is just going to run into a brick wall of the Jaguars. I know that they weren't good against the Cowboys, but that's Zeke and the Cowboys. I can't put any trust in a Texans running game that hasn't been consistent all year with a really bad offensive line. Deion Lewis. The Chargers have given up just one running back one or running back two game this year so far. The running defense of the Chargers is actually pretty solid. And like I said, the Titans offense is horrendous. It's embarrassing. It's not worth starting any of their players. Jordan Howard. Unless he gets into the end zone against the Patriots, like I said, I think this is a Tariq Cohen game. Um, this should be the Tariq Cohen show against the Patriots. So I expect Howard to have a limited role in this game against the Pats. My wide receiver starts. T.Y. Hilton. Hilton is back, and he had 100 yards in one quarter. I think the last game he suited up against the Texans. He's going to be back, and Luck has been balling since he's le since he left. And Luck's taken it to a new level since he's left. So I'm really excited to see what T.Y. Hilton and Andrew Luck can do with a healthy Luck and a healthy Hilton. And I'm going to be happy to watch this. Jarvis Landry. Landry spent a lot of time per reports with Baker Mayfield this week working on some things, getting some chemistry down. Um, it's his go-to guy. It's got to be his go-to guy. He's the most talented receiver on the team. He's paid like it. Um, and he's facing the worst passing defense in the NFL without some of their best pass rushers. So no one can cover Landry on this team. I expect Landry to have a big bounce back performance in this game. Tyler Boyd. The Chiefs defense is really bad. We know this. Um, the 32nd in yards, 31st versus the pass. Tyler Boyd should really take advantage of these weak corners, especially if he gets Orlando Skandrick. Um, the attention should be on A.J. Green. Boyd should have another nice day in this game. Marquise Goodwin. Now, this is an interesting one. A lot of people aren't really putting him in the start category. But for me, the Rams will have to be on their toes against the rushing attack of San Fran. Nobody's been able to stop the running attack of San Francisco this year. Even without McKinnon, Breida out and in and out of the lineup, doesn't really matter. They are one of the best rushing attacks in the NFL. And that to me means that they're going to be peeking in the backfield to make sure they're stopping the run. Especially with C.J. Beathard at quarterback. It's going to be the primary focus. And I think with that happening, Kyle Shanahan will be able to draw up some play action, some deep shots down the field to Marquise Goodwin, where the Rams have been giving up a lot of deep plays, specifically against the Seahawks and Tyler Lockett, very similar receiver to Marquise Goodwin. So I like Goodwin this week as a sneaky flex player. Uh, Sterling Shepard, the Falcons have allowed an average of 109.8 yards per game, uh, the fourth most PPR points and the sixth most touchdowns to slot receivers this year. They're just not a good secondary in general. And Eli Manning should be able to have a nice game in, in this one. And Sterling Shepard should be one of the biggest proponents of that. The Falcons' pass defense ranks 29th. They're 31st in uh, points against. The over-under is 54 in this matchup. My wide receiver sits. Will Fuller. The Jaguars are the number one pass defense in the NFL. Specific, specifically tough against deep threat type wide receivers. I think Kiki Kote will have a nice matchup in this game in the slot like Cole Beasley last week. But outside receivers against Ramsey and Bouye, not the best matchup. Cole Beasley against the Redskins. The Skins have been tough against the slot receiver this year, allowing the fewest yards, one touchdown, and the fourth fewest PPR points to the position. I think this is a down week for Beasley. I actually don't mind him going forward in this season because I think he's the number one go-to guy for Dak. But overall this week, like I said earlier, this should be a defensive game. Robbie Anderson. 
Um, Anderson has a hamstring injury, and when you're a speed receiver with a hamstring injury, it just doesn't mix, especially against the Vikings. So uh, I think he's going to be more of a decoy this week than a big-time proponent of the game plan. Mohamed Sanu. Um, he's banged up. It's on Monday Night Football. You don't even know if he's going to play. I would probably go with someone else on a Sunday, a better option that I have starting this week. Nelson Aguilar. This should be a good game for Jeffrey. Um, Jeffrey, I think, will be facing primarily Bradbury. This is a heavy zone team in Carolina, but Nelson Aguilar, I don't see him having a great game. The biggest thing is that Jeffrey and Ertz have been seeing a majority of the targets, actually by far more targets than Aguilar. And Aguilar is facing a Panthers defense that ranks fifth best versus the slot receiver this year. So not a huge fan of Aguilar this week. My tight end starts, David Njoku. He's straight up on fire. He's getting a ton of targets, leading the team in targets since Mayfield's become the quarterback. And the Bucs have surrendered the most yards per game and points, fantasy points, to tight ends this year. Austin Hooper, uh, Austin Hooper, double digit targets the last two weeks. I really like him against the Giants. Like I said, 54 over under this should be a very high scoring game and both of these tight ends I like I like Evan Ingram as well Evan Ingram returns this week um, and he probably will play uh, so it's a juicy matchup I think against the linebackers and safeties of Atlanta nobody's athletic enough to cover him I think he's gonna have a nice day with the underneath routes for Eli Manning uh, just being that security blanket for him a nervous quarterback pretty much crap in his pants every chance he gets uh, George Kittle He's becoming one of the best tight ends in the NFL in terms of pass catchers. I think that continues this week. It doesn't really matter who he plays. And plus, the Rams have given up two big games to tight ends so far this year. So I expect Kittle to have another one. Okay, let me try this one. CJ Uzoma? I think I got that. I don't know. He'll face the Chiefs defense that has allowed an average of over 91 yards and third most PPR points. And honestly, I have him in a couple of lineups because I've had some injury issues with the tight end position um and it's just a relatively weak position so far this year and this is a really good start chiefs gave up a big game to gronk uh they've given up pretty much a big game to every tight end so far this year per game they're not a very good defense so i think cj should have a nice game he had seven targets last week was pretty productive i think he'll have another game this week all right, guys, so that's the that's the starts and sits for week number seven. I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. It's Mitch at the Bottom Line View. Hit the like button and subscribe for more. We'll see you next time. Peace out.